I would like to uh, continue the topic what uh, my friend Alberto started this morning and then uh, implementing concept of learning community and person-centered uh, some practical remarks, you know. I will, so this is my agenda, uh, defining problems, traditional re response, and uh, innovative response, mostly be using the cases from my teaching, uh, and then we'll come with some conclusions. So uh, the changes, uh, the challenges, I mean, we, we heard today a lot, uh, so I will just, uh, and besides climate change, the growing gap in income distribution, which creates uh, political uh, conflicts and uh, potential destructive force. And then we, as an economist, I see that we don't have sufficient control over capital central concentration, particularly in uh, multinational uh, uh, corporations. And then we have challenges uh, uh, of industrial revolution for zero. So everything uh, uh, what is here mentioned uh, required innovative solutions. So we need to have a creative human capital, entrepreneurship. So I would like to, uh, I'm looking from the point of traditional response and uh, based on my 50 years work in academia on three continents in more than 12 countries, mostly Central Eastern Europe and Central Asia, I think that academia so far does not uh, uh, respond effectively to all this. There is too much concentration on knowledge transfer professor-centered uh, teaching, uh, insufficient resource allocation for building practical skills, undervalued or ignored uh, social competences, soft skills, silosis, uh, weak interdisciplinary or even lack of transdisciplinary teaching limited contact with uh, uh, real life we are still enjoy uh, in many places the ivory tower syndrome and marginalization uh, in fact you know marginalization of ethical and civic responsibilities or values so uh, we need to have innovative uh, responses i will try to characterize some of them which are coming from my experience. However, <laughs> my experience is inspired by many educators, many writers, many genial people uh, we learn from. First of all, we need to make the balance uh, between uh, knowledge, skills, and attitudes, or social competences we discuss here. So this is the, then we need to move to person or student-centered I mean, um, we discussed last night with uh, uh, Alberto, yeah, when I mentioned student center, I mean the person center, <laughs> because sometimes we, we have executives <laughs> who are very important uh, participants. Then we need to overcome uh, disciplinary fragmentation and introduce in solid way, in uh, practical but in a solid way the ethical and civic responsibilities we need this way we need to build not only knowledge skills uh, uh, and attitudes we need to contribute to building new culture based on the values and developing curricula in close collaboration with major stakeholders business public and civic organizations and of course, with students involved, and particularly with graduates. Uh, and then, uh, um, I believe in expands, expanding further case studies and action research with uh, student team projects. And <coughs> I will be talking more about my experience uh, with this. Uh, the issue of case studies, when I start to work, I, I used case studies before I started working with Harvard, but it is a 
interesting combination that they invented this long time ago before we knew from neuroscience that uh, uh, the certain level of stress really mobilize your brain, you know, and then push eruption of neurons, you know, start <laughs> looking for solutions. So I think that this is how I view the, uh, uh, the, the uh, case studies. We uh, need to introduce community learning. We, we heard today two excellent examples, and I mean, Alberto was talking, but Oliver was giving uh, practical examples. Uh, and then uh, this is the, the way of, should be a part of organizational learning. Organizational learning is not only type of format for students, but also for the for the faculty members, we need to learn each other and the continue lear continuing learning is, is very important for us. We should replace uh, single loop into double loop uh, learning and practicing both discussions when you present and uh, defend your views and dialogue, which from the very beginning you are coming with the same assumption, looking for solutions. Both methods are important, and we need to practice in our teaching. And then uh, uh, we need to transform the ivory tower in learning organizations. So I am losing the terms which Peter Zenger uh, introduced, making difference, explaining the difference between uh, organizational learning and uh, learning organization. I understand learning organization as an organization which responds to the needs, the changing needs and challenges from uh, stakeholders. So, I mean, in terms of Peter <laughs> uh, Zenger, which was first mentioned by Veronica today, he defined uh, learning organization as uh, an organization that is continually expanding its capacity to create its future. This is what we, you know, learn. We need to create the future. Create the future, you know, for our graduates, for us, for future place for the university. So in order to become learning organization, it's uh, necessary to apply that uh, at personal or uh, organizational level, the five disciplines he was talking, disciplines which are responding to the question, what we do and how we do, and principles, very important principles which uh, uh, respond why we do it, and to continue study and practice. So, I mean, these are these five disciplines. Uh, I mean, uh, th this literature is more, more <laughs> mainly known, so I will not uh, go to explain them, but <laughs> mention the personal mastery, mental models, team learning, shared vision, and maybe the most important of our system thinking. So these are the uh, differences between organizational learning and uh, uh, learning organization, and then just for you to refresh, you know, the difference between single loop and uh, uh, double loop uh, learning by uh, Argyris. And then uh, the differences uh, between discussion and uh, dialogue, you know, sometimes we call it the debate. Anyway, uh, in order to build learning community, we need to do both. We need to have organizational learning and learning organization. So I understand learning uh, community as the process in each everybody contributes uh, according to his, her knowledge, experiences, and everybody is equal. And, uh, but the roles are different. Uh, for professors who should work most, I will be explaining more as facilitators, for students and speakers. Learning community assume the student-centered approach. Student as a center of education 
should have the conditions in which he, she discovered the old methodological concept. We are not giving him her, but giving conditions when they discover this, because this way they internalize them, they have ownership feelings, not to you know that the professor told them, but they are my own discovery. And professors are facilitators, coaching, uh, guides, sometimes mentors, guest speakers. I use uh, often guest speakers, practitioners mostly, uh, who serve as a resource person that can ask information that I experience, but also often they serve as mentors, uh, particularly useful for students' projects. So let me move to uh, my experiences with this. Started from uh, my master's seminar, one of the first I conducted in Warsaw School of Economics when I was still there. I didn't know the concept of learning community at that time or student-centered, uh, but was somehow intuitive way. Uh, it was uh, just after martial law was lifted, a little bit relaxed atmosphere, but I was impressed by my colleagues, uh, uh, professors and uh, students from Krakow who elaborated within master and PhD programs uh, several excellent reports uh, one of them dealt with uh, Scavina uh, aluminum uh, mill, which uh, produced terrible pollution and damage to human health and to the environment. Based on their report, the steel mill, which produced 50% of aluminum in Poland, was closed. And then they prepared the next, students and professors, they prepared the next stage, reconstruction. Mostly type of environmental uh, reconst uh, recovering technologies. So they did not leave them alone. So my idea was I told my students, so I gathered the students who did some environmental project. And one of them was the uh, resolving pollution problems from Warsaw uh, steel mill. We had suspicions that the da official data presented was not uh, right. And uh, there were many complaints from the neighborhood of steel mill. They are polluting more than they report. So uh, two persons, two young ladies, young students, graduate students decided to take the uh, issue to collect pollution data uh, and based on this analyze and prepare policy recommendations action plan and this way also completing their master thesis and then present the results to the uh, residential community organized by the Polish Ecological Club uh, and this is during the implementation, and, and that it was a situation that I have mentioned and politically relaxed, but solidarity was still underground when they, but you know, since I was also founding member of solidarity at my university, I had contact with solidarity people in steel mill. So they, the data they couldn't get officially they got from my <laughs> contacts, you know. Anyway, uh, during, unfortunately, data collection, it was an accident. One of the students was hit by car, and there was no investigation. We still don't know whether it was the threat of releasing the, the data or just coincidence. I don't want to make any judgment, but I mean, we need to be aware when we are sending students in field work that something like this might happen. 
So uh, output, they completed thesis, they prepared the uh, brief version uh, and disseminated by Polish Ecological Club. Impact, a few years later, when transformation occurred, local community had the report and demanded to change the technology. The Polish government opened uh, privatization bid, the uh, Italian company Lucchini won, and they, within just a few years, they converted uh, the pollute, very polluted steel mill in the cleanest steel mill in Poland. So, by coincidence, my wife was uh, Minister of Industry during that time. Anyway, so, but uh, maybe she was influenced by my report, <laughs> my students' <laughs> report. Anyway, so the next I need to uh, uh, move faster. Executive, uh, um, the 85, 85 at the end of the year, I landed in, uh, uh, in uh, University of Minnesota and started from next year in 86, 87, teaching there. First, uh, uh, we started uh, uh, with the strategies uh, uh, for sustainable development since 98, but uh, one of the most impactful uh, project was the microeconomics of competitiveness for the state government official. I was talking about the previous one, uh, the, the MOC program uh, in uh, my Monday presentation. I want to summarize them then. All together during that time, uh, we, I was able to uh, work with over uh, 380 graduate students and executives. Uh, we prepared 115 projects and delivered to uh, stakeholders. And uh, you know, there are many examples of impacts. I pick up two of them. Uh, one team, two person team prepared the uh, uh, waste management system for the university which was later implemented, and then later they were hired by uh, the uh, city government in Minneapolis to do this. So, and the other uh, case I had a very interesting, I mean the class of sustainable development, uh, uh, middle level, but with good uh, prospects, uh, manager from very large corporation, and within a few years, and his project was to prepare the sustainable development strategy for his company. Within a few years, he was promoted to vice president for cooperation, responsibility for 80 plus thousand employees worldwide, and they started implementing. So uh, anyway, uh, I strongly believe in uh, student projects, uh, then uh, 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 2007, I landed in uh, at the University of Minnesota, uh, University of Washington from University of Minnesota, from the Humphrey School. I was uh, affiliated, uh, I'm still affiliated with Devon School. Uh, so I delivered uh, four types of uh, activities there. MOC, I changed the name uh, because the public affairs students were afraid of microeconomics on uh, competing for prosperity. And then I was teaching strategy for sustainable development, comparative inter uh, in uh, international policy and capstone. Capstone is really, as I mentioned uh, during my Monday presentation, is a great invention of uh, American universities. So altogether, uh, we had uh, 15, uh, 115 graduate students and uh, 25 of them completing master thesis, and with other we developed uh, over 40 uh, projects and uh, they delivered the, uh, to stakeholders. Selected impacts, uh, one of the students, what was very important for the students' projects, this is something what was mentioned here uh, several times, but they were coming usually. I mean, the best students I had in both in Minnesota and uh, in the University of Washington were those who used to be Peace Corps volunteers. They were coming with 
projects either oriented on the countries they used to work to help them or on the countries uh, they uh, wanted to uh, uh, manage. Anyway, so one of them uh, came uh, because he learned uh, that uh, uh, the second hand uh, medical equipment which is delivered to developing countries 85 to 90 percent is just the waste. It's not utilized. He came with innovative uh, process. He looked, you know, the University uh, of Washington had about 3,000 nurses and uh, doctors worldwide working. And he said, well, we will reach them and they will tell us what type of equipment they need and they will instruct local people how to use it. And then we got, he got find sponsor, got million dollars, started project, the pilot in Mozambique, and then with dissemination all over. Let's uh, skip, you know, the other projects. And then uh, I, I'm currently teaching uh, from 2006, uh, 2018 in uh, uh, at Kozminski University in Warsaw, the, the best private university in Poland, uh, both PhD students and graduate students, and first year I'm in the uh, third year undergrads. In fact, you know, I mean, Olivier nicely was talking about building relations, be, uh, peer teaching. In fact, my students uh, will have the peer teaching building relations class tomorrow. I am here, and they have to present the initial drafts of the field reports. They will have the criteria to evaluate and uh, so they will uh, do this. Anyway, conclusions. I think that the project uh, based uh, graduate courses are very useful, good. Uh, they verify the investment in human and social capital, build uh, professional uh, confidence by elaborating. This is it was a signature project. This is the project that are approaching future employers. And uh, so they, they follow their passion. And uh, they so somehow attached to the project. So for business and uh, s uh, public civic organization, this is really a, a very uh, high returns investment. We require them some business and public, you know, it depends you know, on situation, small fees. Uh, for civic organization, we are giving for free. But, you know, they are getting independent reviewing and resolving their problems and providing fresh and sustainable prospects. And very often, our students who were working on projects and got internship were hired by these companies. So uh, and this is the most difficult uh, issue is to build initial confidence. But uh, uh, good reputation university helps. And uh, so it's, let me, uh, let me uh, focus on, on the last uh, 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 conclusion. Community learning is very uh, in des is important in designing uh, and delivery project. I believe it's very, a great tool of education and building sustainable entrepreneurship. This is what they uh, uh, they are learning these practical skills. And the last one, student-centered uh, uh, project really boosts the critical thinking and creativity because they, they want to prove. And uh, action research and uh, building is tool to build uh, students' responsibilities and uh, peer pressure for quality work and strengthening their professional uh, credentials under our facilitations. And then what we organized at uh, Evans School, uh, the presentation of the project is the day before graduation. So they have the friends, parents, uh, friends, and then we're inviting, they are always stakeholders. So they are very proud to present the results of their work. And so this is somehow a rewarding, very rewarding uh, moment. And then uh, enjoy the fruits of their work. <laughs>